storage. I know it is not the most interesting thing in the world, it is not the most exciting thing in the world to talk about, but wait, hear me out. This, this is gonna make you interested, trust me. If you, before I start this video, if you have anything you want to ask and you want to talk about, ask away in the comments because I reply to every single comment. And um, let's get on with it. This right here is not just any little thumb drive or any storage drive. This right here is one terabyte in the palm of my hand. But let's be real, large amounts of storage and small amounts of space has been around for a long time. You've got one terabyte SD cards for a couple of years now and one terabyte micro SD cards I think are starting to be a thing. However, the speed at which those small form factor large storage devices transfer their data is extremely, extremely slow at very, very slow speeds because it's so big in such a small, tiny space. This, however, transfers data at 500 plus megabytes per second reads at no 500 megabytes per second writes and like 1.6 gigabyte per second well this number isn't exactly scientific because i don't have scientific testing equipment it does all that all those numbers without thunderbolt and that is what is impressive about this this right here is the easycast usb 3.1 gen 2 mvme ssd enclosure and we're going to be talking about it and checking it out today so this isn't going to be a full-on review because there's not much to talk about here. It's really just an NVMe SSD enclosure. But this is my first time uh, playing with one of these and it's honestly been the most impressive piece of tech I've touched this year. And I'm very happy that it's actually mine. So I'm very excited to mess around with it and uh, guide you through my little journey with this SSD enclosure. So. Let's talk about the EasyCast here. Uh, this is only like a $40, $50 part from Taobao or AliExpress, but it honestly feels a lot more premium than the price you pay for because it delivers a lot of performance and does it uh, really, really in a very nice form factor. So when I, as I alluded to at the start of the video, it's really compact and it's pretty much the size of an MVME SSD. It's really not much bigger than a full, just a normal M.2 SSD. Uh, and that's because it is an M.2 SSD enclosure with just a little bit of an adapter on top. But yeah, size-wise, it's extremely portable. But even though it's a very small size, it feels very, very well built. In fact, it feels like I'm uh, kind of holding a vape or a jewel because it's so so well built and hefty, like there's liquid in there. But it's just straight up anodized aluminum all round and straight up just solid build quality all around, which makes it feel very premium and almost Apple-esque. So, uh, if you're using this with your MacBook, which you might be, it is a really, really good thing. So it's very small and very compact, which is very good for portability. But uh, I think there's a disadvantage there because it's so small, you might lose it. Uh, so be careful with one of these because um, not only is the enclosure expensive, chances are the SSD you put inside is uh, really expensive. So yeah, this is only an enclosure and you actually need to buy your own SSD. I'll talk about the SSD that I bought later and things like that, but uh, you're actually gonna need to buy yourself like your own SSD for this thing, so be careful about that. Don't just buy it expecting to get a insanely fast SSD. Uh, when it comes to installing the SSD, it's really, really easy. Physically, this enclosure is super, super simple. You've got your USB-C port on top. Uh, it's actually got two blue LED lights that indicate whether it's getting power and stuff. And then it's got two screws on the bottom, which you unscrew to release this lock, allowing you to pull out the SSD enclosure and adapter thing inside. You basically can pull out the internals through the top. And once you get that, those internals out, you can once that you can then remove or install whatever SSD you want with the provided screw and screwdriver. Yes, it comes with a screwdriver, and honestly, that in my opinion is good quality. Uh, so you you pull out that enclosure, you put the M.2 SSD in and then you put the nut and then you use the screwdriver to screw in the nut and then you secure your SSD and once you've done that it is essentially complete and you have done your installation of your SSD and literally that's that. So it promises driverless installation uh, which <laughs> from my testing so far it has actually fulfilled that promise. The moment I plugged it in it started working uh, on both my laptop and my desktop PC so that is sick especially for a product from China. Not being racist or anything, I'm Chinese, but they have a notorious reputation for making a lot of false promises that don't actually 
they don't actually deliver on. So it delivers on that promise of um, plug and play compatibility and it also delivers its promise on the fact that it's USB 3.1 Gen 2. I know a lot of SSD enclosures and a lot of drive enclosures, they advertise a certain speed or they advertise a certain spec of their enclosure, but it's not even close at all to it. But in this case, it is 100% USB 3.1 Gen 2 because um, as you're gonna see from my testing footage and me messing around, you're gonna realize that this thing is hella fast with the SSD I put inside. So for testing and also for my general purpose use, the SSD I got is the Crucial P1. Uh, I don't know actually what video, what I will title this video exactly, but this is my first time messing with USB 3.1 Gen 2. And uh, it's not Thunderbolt, but at the same time, it is insanely quick that it feels like I'm pretty much using Thunderbolt. This is, I think, as fast as Thunderbolt 2. Not as fast as Thunderbolt 3, which is nuts and crazy, but for just USB, this the speeds that I got from this drive and with just a USB cable is insane. And I can't wait to show you what I get, the results and stuff. So the SSD I want to put, I'm once again gonna say is the Crucial P1. I got a one terabyte SSD and the Crucial P1 isn't a phenomenal SSD. Uh, if you fill it up to about 80 to 90%, it does start to slow down because it is based on the QLC technology which makes it a lot cheaper per gigabyte, which is very important to me because I just need cheap, uh, reasonably fast storage on hand. So that's good enough, but it does slow down if you fill it up a bit. So if you have plans to really whack the hell out of these SSDs, don't get the Crucial P1 on the MX500 because of their QLC SSD technology. I gotta explain what these technologies mean, but at this, A, I'm not an electrical engineer, and B, um, I don't have enough time for this video. I want to keep it short and exciting and sweet. So we're going to go and mess around with this right now and we're going to see what numbers we can get. I know what numbers we're going to get. I'm going to show it to you what numbers we can get. Oh yeah, also, by the way, in the B-roll, if you, if you wonder why one of the screws are larger than the other, uh, that's because um, essentially I unscrewed the stuff and then it dropped on the floor and I've never found the screw since. So I just found a replacement screw as a stopgap. So let's get on with testing uh, it. So it actually came in this kind of uh, shoddy packaging, which isn't that impressive, I'm gonna be honest. It's like for its potential, it doesn't really look premium or anything for the fact that it performs so well, it doesn't really look pre premium or anything, but it's a PCIe Gen 3 times two to USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is pretty much what M.2 NVMe is. Um, it comes with quite a few number of accessories though, which I found kind of impressive. So. First off, it comes with a USB Type-C to a USB Type-C cable, which is rated for those fast USB 3.1 data speeds, of course. It works perfectly fine and really acts, uh, operates at the performance level you expect it to. It also comes with a um, USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable, which is great because I've been needing a few of these to charge my phones and stuff. And it also comes with a little screwdriver. This little screwdriver over here, it comes with it and it essentially is supposed to be perfect for these tiny screws down here on the bottom of the device. But um, as you can tell, as I've told you before, I lost the small screw for one of these screws. So it's a, it's a bit of a stopgap solution for now. So we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna show you the kind of numbers that I'm getting just transferring files. Uh, because when I first got it and I was messing around with it, all, all I did was transfer the files just to see the numbers, uh, the insane numbers that it was reporting. So let's, let's go for that. Uh, so one thing you have to be careful with this is that uh, sure it's USB 3.1 Gen 2 but your motherboard might not actually have USB 3.1 Gen 2 your motherboard might not actually have that or your laptop might not actually have that so you have to be careful in buying and investing in a system like this because uh, if you invest in a system like this and your, your, your more expensive system your laptop or your computer doesn't support it and it's going to be a waste of money thankfully my X370 motherboard does have uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 on the back of it so I can just plug it into there and then have no problems at all. I know some people are gonna buy like an SSD enclosure and then plug it into wrong ports and be like, why haven't I gotten the performance that I, I expected it to? But the usually the answer is you didn't plan enough or do enough research. So make sure you ensure that, you know, your computer has USB 3.1 Gen 2 or whatever spec that you are shopping for before you buy like an SSD for it. So yeah, be careful and be aware. So right now I'm just going to show you some totally unscientific numbers and some totally 
not consistent and 100% accurate <laughs> speed benchmarks. I would just be transferring this 10 gig file to and from the SSD and you can personally see in Windows how fast it transfers. Obviously there are many different things to judge an SSD's performance uh, and whether you know an enclosure is good enough shouldn't actually be determined by this video but as I've stated at the start of this video this is really just me messing around and exploring this USB 3.1 Gen 2. But honestly, uh, at the performance it's at, I think most of the consumers who are going to go and buy this SSD are going to be 100% happy with its performance because with this crucial P1 SSD, as you can tell, I'm getting, uh, I think, writes of about 500 megabytes per second and getting reads of like 1.6 gigabytes per second straight to my SSD. Of course, these numbers would change depending on how much the SSD is filled up, uh, the age of the SSD, and of course the model of the SSD. So I'm not saying this is a perfect review of the crucial P1 combined with this enclosure I'm just showing you some numbers so you can roughly expect the performance that you're getting from here and it is crazy fast and it's crazy awesome and I also honestly think it's pretty exciting uh, to look at those big big numbers I've never seen something transfer so fast before now another thing that I think uh, would be good to showcase how effective it is as a drive is to just literally run a game off of it. The thing about running a game or a, any app off of a external drive is that if the connection isn't fast enough, you're gonna have a long time. It'll take a very long time for game to start up. You're gonna have a lot of issues. So often you're gonna have some lag issues or input lag if the drive you're running it off of isn't fast enough. But uh, because this is such a fast drive, as I've already shown, it's USB 3.1 Gen 2 SSD. It actually really is very really fast and very effective. I'm just gonna run Shadow of the Tomb Raider here. And uh, as you can tell, I, I got a bit engrossed with it. In fact, I played about 30 minutes of this and I forgot I was recording at all. Um, but basically, yes, you can run apps off of this. You can run an, a, a game off of this. And that is actually one of the things I've planned for this. Uh, this is going to be a drive that I run all my games off of just so that, you know, it's convenient. And also it leaves my main SSD, which is honestly quite a bit faster, uh, free of any sort of unnecessary apps and stuff, giving me enough space to do my video editing projects off of my main uh, one terabyte drive. So having this external drive be able to be the, the benchmark drive and the app and the game running drive is uh, very important for me and it's very awesome that I actually can do that. So if you want to run a game off of this drive, which you might not, you probably won't, uh, you can. But it's also a testament to how fast and consistently quick that this drive is. So because it's so consistently quick, obviously it can run these games no problem at all. So just a little performance uh, demonstration for you here. As you can tell, I'm very excited and actually genuinely uh, geeking out over how fast drives have gotten and uh, having to experience it firsthand has been an impressive uh, experience. So, so uh, let's get to the conclusion time, I guess. So yeah, essentially you saw the like the performance numbers, you saw all those big numbers of transfer suites and you saw the fact that I could just play Shadow of the Tomb Raider, load it up for the first time seamlessly on this SSD through USB, not even Thunderbolt, and just play it seamlessly, really quickly, and have a very, very enjoyable experience. So are you impressed yet? I don't know. I've been having a lot of fun just messing around with this crazy fast SSD um, and this crazy fast stuff that I haven't played before. So uh, I don't know if you can sense my excitement and my slight deliriousness because I haven't slept in three days. Uh, but you know, I've been messing around and I've been having a lot of fun with it. A few things to note, however, a few observations I've made with this SSD so far is that um, when it comes to the thermals, SSDs really do heat up a lot and this thing is toasty and spicy hot. Uh, second thing I've noticed is that when I opened it up, the inside didn't really have any sort of thermal adhesive or thermal contact with the case. So even though it's very warm and we can be sure that a lot of heat is being dissipated by this aluminium case, uh, I can't be sure that enough of it is. Uh, if there was one thing I would do, I'll probably go and buy some thermal pads uh, to put them on the SSD so that uh, they will come somewhat into contact with enclosure 
of the SSD case so that that way we can actually dissipate more heat and ensure that the SSD lasts longer and has better longevity. But I, then again, I've been whacking it with a really hard load of um, gaming, you know, transferring files back and forth non-stop. Uh, just to show you a couple of cool numbers and it's performed really, really well. And I can't help but say I'm really happy. So most of this performance has to go with the, the, the Crucial P1 SSD, but uh, the easy cast and closure that I got here is honestly, it's, it's been impressive because with the price I got, it delivers all its promises. It came with a bunch of good accessories. It's great build quality. It performs very well, very consistently, very easy to deal with. Uh, and honestly, I have nothing to complain about it. So if you're looking for an USB 3.1 Gen 2 SSD enclosure, do check out the EasyCast uh, enclosure. It's not sponsored, obviously, but it just happened to be that this one I bought is really good. So if you, if you want one, do check this out. And also, uh, the Crucial P1 SSD seems pretty good so far. And also, USB 3.1 Gen 2 is freaking sick and I'm gonna to try to use it as much as I can. And it's a feature I definitely want on the next laptop that I buy when I do get that, probably when I go to university. So keep that in mind and um, enjoy the wonders of technology that is a portable one terabyte SSD that transfers speed at 500 megabytes per second without Thunderbolt. What? Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it or found it helpful or you know you enjoyed the little ride that we had exploring some really fast SSD numbers, uh, please like and subscribe because my channel is struggling and I've been working so hard at it, I don't know why it hasn't grown. Um, please like and subscribe, I really appreciate your support. Thank you all so much for watching anyway though, goodbye.